Hello! I am so excited to uh, have another year where we can put forth these devotional videos. Uh, this year we're going to focus on a theme. That theme is Relentless, as you probably saw in the title card. But we're looking at this idea of relentless and what it means to be a relentless follower of Christ. And I've got a number of guys that are lined up for uh, the upcoming weeks to provide us with uh, some thoughts on different aspects of being a relentless follower of Christ. And I want to start out today, um, uh, as you could see by the title, uh, by looking at perseverance and having relentless perseverance perseverance in the following of Jesus. Uh, but I want to start off with this uh, with this story here. Whenever I'm, I'm in the mood to, uh, whenever I'm hungry and I'm in the mood for uh, chicken, one of my favorites other than uh, Chick-fil-A is KFC. There's just something about those 11 herbs and spices that just really hit the spot. Um, but have you ever heard the story of Colonel Sanders himself? Um, it's, it's really uh, fascinating. It's a really good story. It's really inspiring. He was born in 1890 in Indiana, and when he was six years old, his father passed away, uh, leaving him to take care of his siblings, his mother. In the seventh grade, he dropped out of school. He left home to go work as a farmhand. At 16, he faked his age in order to enlist in the Army, and after being honorably discharged a year later, he got hired by the railway as a laborer. After that, though, he got fired uh, because he was fighting with a co-worker. But while he was working on the rail railway, he studied law till he ruined his legal career by getting into another fight. Uh, Sanders was forced to move back in with his mother and get a job selling life insurance, from which he got fired for insubordination. But this guy would not give up. In 1920, he founded a ferry boat com company, a yeah, company to, to, to ferry you, across river, uh, across water. Later, he tried cashing in his ferry boat business to create a lamp manufacturing company, only to find out that another company sold a better version of what he was trying to sell. It wasn't until 40 that he began selling chicken. Uh, he did so at a service station. As he began to advertise his food, an argument with a competitor resulted in a deadly shootout. Four years later, he bought a motel, which burned to the ground, along with his restaurant. He rebuilt and ran this new motel until World War II forced him to close it down. Following the war, he tried to franchise his restaurant, but his recipe was rejected over a thousand times before anyone finally accepted it. Sanders' secret recipe was coined Kentucky Fried Chicken, and quickly it became a hit. But his restaurant was crippled when an interstate opened nearby. So Sanders sold it and pursued his dream of spreading KFC franchises and hiring KFC workers all across the country. So after years of failures and misfortunes, Sanders finally hit it big. KFC expanded internationally and he sold the company for $2 million in his time. Today that would be about $15.3 million. At age 90, he passed away from pneumonia. At that time when he passed away, there were about 6,000 KFC locations in 48 countries. As of last year, 2020, there are more than 20,952 KFC locations worldwide in 119 countries and territories, with about 8,065 in Asia alone in 5,184 outlets in North America. When you hear the word persevere, I hope that's a word that you can relate to. I hope uh, you, you hear this word and you're like, yes, that is me. I'm a person who perseveres. I hope you're someone that is just like the colonel, um, in that sense at least. When it comes to following Christ, it's not going to be easy. You're going to need to be that kind of person who can push through the hard times you got to have determination because it's not going to be easy being someone living for Jesus. Um, Jesus himself says as much in Luke 9, 57 through 62. It says, As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. 
And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man, I, have nowhere to lay his head, my head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. He, he warns all who, who follow him, uh, or who claim that they want to follow him, at least, that it's not going to be sunshine and roses all the time. It's work, and it's going to require sacrifice. Two things that we really don't want to have to go through. Two things that we don't want to do a lot of times. Now, speaking from experience. <laughs> However, Paul gives us a few reminders in his reminding, in his writings um, to the churches of just what can come out of persevering through the hard times. Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, since we've just been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Paul tells us that when we go through hard times, there's potential for growth. There's potential for good to come out of it. Suffering creates endurance, the ability to, to, to endure these hard times and become stronger for it. Endurance produces characters, which are the traits that define someone, produces character. Character produces hope, hope, that thing that drives us, and in our case, the hope of eternal life with God in heaven. Paul tells us what's going to come uh, to us if we should persevere through the hard times in 2 Timothy 4, 6-8. At this point, Paul is coming to the end of his life when he's writing to Timothy. He says, For I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I have persevered. Right? Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Paul reminds Timothy that he hasn't lost, even though throughout his life he'd suffered a great deal. Remember, he, he kind of talks about that, about his experiences. You know, he's he's been beaten. He's been shipwrecked. He's been left for dead. He, he treaded water uh, for in the sea for a few days. Uh, he, he was stoned. He went through all these things. And even now, he is awaiting his impending death. He says, I have not lost. People are going to look at me sitting here in, in, in prison, whatever, and think, that poor man. No, don't think that about me. I am winning. And I am about to receive my award for winning. I'm about to receive my award for persevering, for pushing through, for enduring. We can't just pull perseverance out of our pocket every now and then when something comes up. Um, because if we try to do that, we will only persevere through the easy times. No, we have to persevere throughout our lives for everything that comes up. It's every time our friends pressure us to act, talk, or think in wrong ways. It's every time we have to choose between good and bad. It's every time that we fail to succeed. Think back to uh, Colonel Sanders. Think about how many times he failed, a lot of it because of himself. He tripped over his own feet. He made poor decisions, right? But he kept going. He pushed through, and he finally found success later in his life. My hope is that you have the strength to persevere. And in those moments when you don't have the strength, I hope that you have strong friendships with people who do have the strength to lift you up and hold you. And not only hold you when you can't stand on your own, but to hold you accountable, right? Because 
if I'm just going to trust myself to hold myself accountable, I'm going to let myself get away with a lot of stuff. Have people that are going to lift you up when you're weak and hold you accountable when you're about to be guilty of something. When you're relentlessly pursuing God, remember, He'll help you persevere. And when you do, you can expect a crown of righteousness.